am very honored to be here today as the executive director and co-founder of Gamco Trap, an organization that is fighting against female genital mutilation. Gamco Trap is the Gambia Committee on Traditional Practices Affecting the Health of Women and Children in the Gambia. We have been working on different elements of women's rights, particularly the elimination of female genital mutilation, early marriage, and addressing gender-based violence. My organization is currently paying attention to the elimination of female genital mutilation because it is one of the most dangerous practices that affects the sexuality of African women, many African women for that matter, and it also is irreversible. Because of the nature of the practice, we thought that's the priority for my organization to address alongside other forms of violence using a rights-based approach. We used different strategies to deal with this, um, looking at it from a very culturally responsive way in addressing the issue, because it is deep-rooted and grounded on patriarchal principles of control. Control over the female body, control over the sexuality of the woman, and therefore everything that shapes the life of the woman is centered around that. How do we go about that? We try to raise consciousness of women and men. We try to map the power dynamics of what goes on in, uh, within the framework of the chamber of circumcision in order to reach out. Because it is shrouded in the culture of secret, and secrecy is very difficult to address. You, I might be talking to you right now whilst they are doing something over there at the back, and everybody is smiling because it is felt this is what it should be. This is how we have been shaped within the framework of sexuality, and as a result, we need to use culturally responsive strategies to deal with it. Apart from that, I want to tell you my story. When I was 10 years, I was taken to my mother's house and was told, you're going to be a woman. And I was very happy because what I saw around me was so beautiful, songs, dance, beats, my cultural outfits, and everything around me was so beautiful that I said, when is the day that I'm going to be a woman? Only to find that the following day, I was taken to the bush with beautiful songs, dances, and all the frenzies it goes with. I was laid down, and my clitoris was cut. With different parts, not only the clitoris, the smaller lips, and other parts were damaged. This symbolizes, I symbolize a lot of African women who have been circumcised in the name of culture, in the name of who the ideal woman is. This is me. When I realized it was done to me, I was told it was my faith. I'm a Muslim. And I was told it is religion. I accepted because as a person who is, who is, or who, who is a Muslim, maybe this is what was said. But then I didn't stop there. When I got married, my hus I had, I'm a mother of four children, three girls and one boy. My husband told me, my girls are not going to be circumcised. And I said, hey, what do you mean? How can you say that when your religion says it? He said, no, it is not about religion. It's about control. My husband is a medical doctor, and he's been seeing a lot of incidences of the effects of FGM on women's health, and he raised my consciousness. It was from that day I went to look at the Quran and found out there was absolutely nothing that talks about female genital mutilation. It does not resonate with the religion, and the religion does not call to heart. I thought, this is the time I should rise. Rise with my husband, rise in my culture, rise on the continent, and rise with the whole world to fight against this canker worm. I looked at it from different elements, and during that time, I, was, I used the traditional structures to enter. When I entered at the beginning, it was not easy. There were challenges because of resistance. Most of the people are not educated. They do not have access to information. Then my only tool was awareness raising, consciousness raising, 
empowering the people to make the right choices, to make the right decisions, and to see the effects. So I looked at it from a multimedia modular package with my team, looking at it from a rights-based approach, health, so the social dimensions, and how this affects the bodily integrity, dignity, and the social being of the woman. And that, we have realized, has been the basis of domestic violence in most of our African homes, because the women are not complete. They are no longer the women they are supposed to be. They are suffering the deleterious effects of FGM, and as a result, they need to be aware. I developed passion because my fear has been alleviated. I was accepted in my community, in the regions, because I am part of them. I am circumcised, and I have agreed to use myself as a role model to tell them, hey, this is a problem that affects all of us. We can only effect change if we agree to recognize it and put it on the public arena. It's no longer supposed to be a secret cult. It should be as a development issue so that we will see how to save the future generations. We are gone. I am circumcised. So I am gone. The generation I am speaking to will be the mothers of the next generation. And therefore, we are to come together and help to save the next generation from this dangerous practice. And I am getting it. Getting it in the sense that these traditional structures, which are highly patriarchal, and the practice of female genital mutilation residing in it is the whole issue of women being the patriarchal gatekeepers, where you are taught how to be an ideal woman, how you are supposed to be preserved for the man and not for your own pleasure. Now, we have been able to deconstruct those patriarchal notions from a very cultural point of view, using songs, dance, dirges, discussions by the wells, in the gardens, in, under, under the baobab trees, in classrooms, and also in different fora to this. Uh, this is what we call community sensitization, training and information campaigns, to be able to raise the awareness of these women and men who have been told Female genital mutilation is a religious injunction. My challenges were the religious scholars who felt it was pride for them to come back and say it is not in the Quran. That's the biggest challenge the Gambia faced, and we had to develop a package that looks at religion in its entirety, the rights of women in Islam, what did Islam say about women, uh, female genital mutilation, and how that impacts on women's health, and what does it do? We were able to deconstruct that by using the local language, using imams who read, and using other examples from other countries in order to convince our religious scholars. And I am happy to tell you that today, we have a lot, a lot, a whole lot of scholars who are now rising and talking about FGM and Islam and we have pockets of resistance here and there. But I believe that if you're doing change, you have to be patient, you have to be strategic, you have to map the power dynamics, you also have to understand the context and the circumstances in which people resist. Sometimes it is not about wanting to preserve something that is dangerous, but that's what you believe. So you must have an alternative to be able to bring that change. And that is what I have been able to do by looking at my culture, looking at my people, looking at the context in which we are, and how female sexuality is being uh, organized, decided, and expected. And that is where I was able to get them over, because they list, we had consultations. We listened to each other. I gave the power to the men and said, you are the decision makers. Tell me what you want for your daughters. Tell me one f what you want for your women. Tell me what type of women you want. Why did you take me to school? Why did I go to school? Or why do you want to get your children to school? You want them to be better than you. I've come to bring something better. And through that processes, those processes that we went through, I started getting a lot of people around me. And communities began to do consultation in African cultural praxis. There is that whole issue of interaction exchange, and talking, singing, and dancing, and trying to bring in messages through those uh, medium in which we will be able to understand each other. And this is what I have been able to do, playing on the politics and the polemics of the culture to be able to bring in the people to resonate with me in what I was doing. What are my challenges? I'm just coming from prison. I went there not because of anything, because we, I opened my mouth. <laughs> Silence is some of the ingredients of
traditional practices. You have to be quiet. Never say what happened to you. Never talk about it. This is what a woman is supposed to be. So if you do not deconstruct it by talking or by dealing with it in a way that everybody participates, then it perpetuates itself. And this is what I have not been doing with my partners. And as a result, we were becoming a threat to the status quo. They felt I was going to use that power of the community who are listening to me to political position, and they thought I should be taken to the prison whilst the elections are coming so that I don't undermine patriarchal control of the governance system and so on. But I was out with the passion to support my people, to help them, educate them, and to see that the next generation of children are going to be uh, protected. And I'm happy to tell you that during that process, I was able to have 98 circumcisers drop. Four regions of my country have stopped. I have only three more regions to go. If the resources are there and everything is in place, I am sure by 2020, I should be able to declare the Gambia the, uh, an FGM free uh, country. FGM <laughs> is dangerous. Thank you. 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 FGM is against the bodily dignity and integrity of women. It abuses the sexuality of women. It is not acceptable and must not be acceptable. And it is worth, worth investing in to be able to ensure that humanity is preserved and not being mutilated. Because women constitute about 50% of the population. And it is important that they have health and well-being. They are able to be dignified in their society to be able to take on their roles. Thank you.